Hello and welcome shadowy kindred, and insomniac zombies, of the night side of Eden to the haunted art studio of my sorcerer artist, Faustus Crow. It appears I have time to kill, since my crow has fallen asleep under his world tree of an easel, after conjuring me as his succubus art model. It must be because his sleeping patterns are all out of circadian rhythm whack due to him attempting to fulfill a hellish deadline. Never mind, I will otherwise inspire his rune dreams during the witching hour, wherein he'll ride me as his Valkyrie nightmare. I guess, in the meantime, I will have to otherwise speak to you, until my crow once again arises out of his eight-legged coffin to paint my muse manifestation. I sometimes find myself wondering about, how did the naked ape become so smart, and what initiated it to happen? To untangle this age-old question, anthropologists have been seeking to discover archaeological artifacts which reveal the evolving intelligence of my crow's human ancestors, who lived 1.8 million years ago. It was at this point in the far distant past that a new type of stone tool had erupted upon the scene along with the human brain nearly doubling in size. Some researchers have suggested that this more advanced technology, coupled with a bigger brain, implies a higher degree of intelligence, which was propelled by the first signs of language. But there could be another driving force propelling this evolutionary leap in tool making, which is far more basic, yet profound in its implications, that it was driven by the biological imperative to be seen as being attractive to the opposite sex. Basically, the ape with the bigger chopper got the female's attention because with such a large tool, he could provide the necessary fodder for his mate and progeny. This of course also required him to have a bigger brain pan to create a better and far more efficient chopper than his competition, whereby enabling him to sow his seed, siring ever more clever apes. But without the inspiration of his female mate, he would have never been able to create a chopper in the first place. Sounds a bit too caveman basic, doesn't it? Let us move forward in time to the glory that was ancient Greece, to see a horny Pygmalion sculptor sculpting a Venus out of marble with his advanced tool, or that of a sweaty Renaissance artist painting a canvas, inspired by an art model muse, who also drove the Frankenstein scientist absolutely crazy, creating varied technological tools. Your programmed brain might consider that this generalized interpretation is politically incorrect let alone sexist. Well, it isn't, it takes two to tango doesn't it? It has always been a case of a team effort in order to survive all those great mammals which made your ancestors look like tiny meals on bipedal legs. However they had those nifty hunting tools, bringing down mammoths, which they also used to defend themselves against saber-toothed tigers, cave bears, and other creatures wanting to gobble them all up, to have later created the technological world you presently know now, looking towards the Star Trek stars. There is an ancient Hindu adage that goes, a god is not a god without his Shakti. The term Shakti means the feminine principle, who as prior mentioned, is the creative inspiration and meaning of all life itself. Another old adage is, behind every great man is a woman, which is presently considered to be extremely sexist. Although, when you look into other cultures, such as for example, ancient Egypt, a pharaoh crowned as a falcon-headed Horus, derives his power from the throne, which is seen to be Isis female, just as a Merlin hawk is traditionally flown from a lady's hand. In other words, 
The driving force behind the evolutionary creative impulse is the biological imperative to be attractive to the opposite sex, otherwise there is no furtherance of life. You might ask if there is any hard evidence of the evolution of intelligence being entwined with evolving tool use, which enables a tool using ape to become more attractive to the opposite sex. It just so happens that Douglas J. Emlin, a professor of biology at the University of Montana, is researching how animals evolve their extreme weapons, which has an evolutionary correlation with the rapidly evolving tools that humans use. Emlin authored the book, Animal Weapons, The Evolution of Battle. Emlin explained, the drive to be a breeder is so strong, it's one of the most astonishing things about sexual selection. About 90% of males never breed their whole lives but they do anything and everything in the world to get a chance to mate. It's expensive, dangerous, they are more likely to get eaten, but they've got almost no shot at breeding if they don't do that. Emlin's personal specialty is entomology, the study of insects, but the rules, which govern the evolutionary growth of insects, displaying their weapons of virility also applies with surprising uniformity throughout the animal kingdom. What is intriguing is that it is a mirror between animal weapon development and your own human military arms race. Emlin further explained, I actually was amazed to find these military historians making the same observations about the animal world as I was seeing in the human world, such as the defense analyst, disarmament negotiator, and historian, Robert O'Connell, who in his book of arms and men, wrote about weapons evolution and drew the same parallels with animals that I'm seeing. Another line of research is also of interest concerning Emlin's findings is the study of human brain scans. Although disconnected from Emlin's research, it is a very important part of the puzzle. The brain scans have revealed that when male brains are shown what would be considered to be softcore pornographic images of scantily clad females, the region of the male brains associated with tool use immediately lights up. The fire in the head phenomenon occurs whether the male brains consider themselves to be heterosexual, bisexual, or homosexual. The brain scan research was conducted by a psychologist at Princeton University, whose name is Susan Fisk, who used the research to prove her objectification of men as seeing women as mere objects. However, Fisk didn't realize what she had actually discovered due to her political agenda, hence entirely missing the eureka moment. The part of the male brain which is associated with toolmaking is not shared by females. The brain scan research indicates something else, concerning the shamanistic usage of erotic meditation images, in order to activate the region of the brain associated with toolmaking. The shamanistic technique involves the conscious conjuring up of personified ideas as anima archetypes, my sorcerer artist, Faustus Crow conjures, as his succubi art muses, who manifest amidst his triangle of art imagination, unto eroticized lucid dreams, whose inner manifestations enable consciousness expansion. As my crow engages himself in his creative meditation exercises within his haunted art studio, when painting me and my succubi sisters, as his conjured art models, he will of course have to breathe correctly. Or should I say, when becoming aroused. His lungs will naturally pump out endogenous DMT, which of breathing will take its natural course, depending on how bodily aroused he becomes, while conjuring me amidst his triangle of art imagination. 
His creative meditation leads to my erotic manifestation upon his painted canvas, leading thence to inner muse visions, stirring his biophoton illuminated dreams into consciousness expansion, which of lucid dreaming lights up the tool making part of his brain of a fire in the head others will invariably construe as being a pornographic activity it gives a whole new slant on the visionary exclamation eureka which is famously attributed to the ancient greek scholar archimedes having an endogenous dmt tool making insight when stepping into his bath I will leave it to the women to imagine what he was actually doing of a meditation exercise upon a bust of the goddess, Athena, just before bathing his illuminated head. The tool-making part of the male brain can be activated by conjuring a scantily clad sexy female amidst the triangle of art imagination, as an inspiring art muse aspect of the anima, who inspires invention whether it is to do with the arts or sciences, etc. It goes far further when to conjure a succubus art muse within a lucid dream. The muse principle is behind many an artistic and technological innovation, since the time of a male ape picking up a stone to throw at a predatory lioness, which then evolved into an impressive chopper, the female apes were impressed by. Other researchers pointed out that women tend to be attracted to Christian grey type males, who have 50 shades of grey, wealth, power and influence, due to their Dr. Frankenstein inventiveness, and that Fisk should test female subjects to see what twilight parts of their Babylon brains light up when shown werewolf images of beastly Christian greys posing themselves near vampire power cars. She declined to do so. Fisk told National Geographic News, if a similar study were done with women, it would be hard to predict whether a woman shown a scantily clad male body would objectify him in the same way. Fisk has most definitely missed the evolutionary point. It is not a case of objectifying a woman as a tool to use. It is more of a biological drive to impress her with an invented tool, she muse, inspires, so that she will choose him as her mate. A woman would likewise objectify a male, if he hasn't got a big enough twilight chopper, I mean, a stone axe. Anyway, my haunted art studio tale is presently at an end. Darker tales to tell, later, for those patrons of the dark arts. Now I have to flap my leathery bat wings and fly off and pose for my crow as his inspiring succubus art muse. He appears to have arisen from out of the Lovecraft dreamlands who is presently conjuring me into his erotic triangle of art imagination in order to fulfill his hellish deadline. So, it's back to work for me, but then, as the old adage goes, there's no rest for the wicked. Bye for now. May your Necronomicon lucid dreams be Lovecraft, dark of a seventh runic seal, revelation.